AFTV DT. <laughs> wow, what a game. I mean, come on. You thought we were out, didn't you? I 100% thought we were out. Listen to my voice. Yeah. I promise you. I <laughs> voice promise is gone. everyone at home. I do not have COVID. That is what <laughs> Arsenal have done to me tonight. Oh, my. You see when that third goal went in, yeah? You ever watch Lion King? And, you know, they do the circle of life and they pick Simba up. That was my little boy. He got <laughs> launched across the room. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, I'm telling you, Robbie, when Sabayas done that header, I, it was like slow motion. And as he's walking up to the goal, and I'm like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, what have you done? What have you done? And I looked at the car and I was like, that's it. That's it. The season's over. Like, yep. how can even I be positive about going out at this stage? How can I look at that? And, and then, and then. And then he brings up, he makes immediate substitute. And then on top of that, he brings up Willie. <laughs> and, and I'm like, I'm just thinking to myself, this is it. At the end of the game, he's going to get absolutely destroyed. But listen, what happened? What happened? But the decision was right in the end, wasn't it? Willie had got an assist. Sorry, you froze up a bit then. Say that again. I said, Willie had got an assist. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? So, fair play for making the substitution and everything else. But, whoa, I tell you, we, we needed that Tierney goal at the point that we got it with 20 minutes to go to kind of push us on. And when he hit that in, I was like, what? Are, like, and I'm still all over the place, man. My head is just like. Robbie, look, listen, the reality is, yeah, it's that that's the round of 32. We've got such a long way to go. But emotionally, like, that could be huge for our season. That could be huge for not just the players, but the manager, the fans, everybody. You know, Mikel got it wrong tonight in terms of the team selection, as far as I'm concerned. Um, individual brilliance and moments got him out of jail in, in some respects. You know, but at the same time, yeah, you've got to give him credit for making the substitution when he did and bringing the likes of Willian on when it would have been very simple to bring on a lack of that or whatever mm. it was. And yeah, it's, it's six of one half a dozen. The other half, four Odegaard tonight looked really good, man, in that 10 role and in the second half in particular. And Bukayo Saka again, 19 years old, man. 19! Like, the ball Unreal. goes out to him, yeah, and it's just... Like, like when he he done them step overs and that ball comes in, and like, I mustn't be the only person in the country, yeah. That when moments like that happen, you turn into the striker on the end of it, and you head the ball too. <laughs> you jump, you head it, you like go through every. The only thing that I couldn't do was a Bamiyang somersault. Because I'd end up <laughs> breaking my back. But then, DT, you know what? The other thing is as well, right? Is that after that, right? Like me and Pippa, we're watching it on the stream and we're like, hey, hold on. Is he on site? Yeah. VAR. Everyone's jumping up and down and I'm like, hey, uh, yes. just that luck. The, the, the thing is, is that I had a bit of confidence because Aubameyang literally went through his whole repertoire, the flip, everything. Mm. And I was like, he must know. He must know that's on site. And then the worst thing about the Europa League is they don't show replays. Normally, mm. you can watch a replay and you can instantly go onside. Okay, oh, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. My watch nearly blew up with the heart rate monitor on it because I'm watching <laughs> him and he's like this. <laughs> it's like watching Ty. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like... And I'm telling you, I'm sitting there and I'm like, what on earth? Please, 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 please. And the moment he points to the centre, your emotions just go all over the place again because instantly I go from being up here and elation to going, 
How long's left? Right, right, don't you dare, don't you dare mess this up now, please don't you dare. And when they had that opportunity to hit the post, I know oh. it's offside, but we don't know it's offside. And you don't know VAR could have pulled it back and yeah. The way that ball looped, Leno's like this. I'm waiting for the net, net to nestle, and it was all over. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, and in a sadistic kind of way, I actually wished it would have gone in knowing now that it would have been offside anyway. Because it would have been funny seeing them celebrate and then have the goal taken away. Yeah, but... yeah. Uh, listen, that's a huge, huge result. Um, we, we do have to touch a bit on some of the poor... I, I mean, both goals, really. I mean, listen, that was a fantastic week. But Sobias had a nightmare tonight. I mean, first of all, giving away that free kick just on half time with a stupid foul... And then I don't know what he was doing with that head on the second goal. I mean, that was terrible. Calamitous. Calamitous. But I I'm glad for him that we were able to turn it round because I dread to think the amount of abuse he would have received. Oh. And, and you've you, you got to remember as well, he's technically not an Arsenal player. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I remember... Agent. I, it would have been agent of bias. <laughs> oh, mate. I remember, like, I tweeted out after he did it and I said, what have you done, Sobias? And I was, like, just effing F off. I was, like, <laughs> so, like, no, no, no. What have you done? So, I'm so glad for him personally that we were mm. able to turn that around because... You know, you dread to think some of the stuff that would have possibly been said that crosses yeah. way over the line from opinion and whatever. And yeah. Emotions run so high, but look, man. It, let me let me just... let me find out. Yeah, it's an emotional roller coaster. Um, let me mm -hmm. find out from you. Who, who do you want then? We're in the hat tomorrow. Who do you want? I don't even care right now, man. I don't <laughs> even know who's through. Could man. get Tottenham. Could get Man United. Maybe. You know, we could get any of the English teams, Rangers, oh, you know what I mean? So I don't I don't think my heart can take like do you know what them sort of results sometimes, them sort of results are the results where you go on and win. You can or even get can. to the final. Remember, it's kind of remember, remember the um when we got to the Champions League final mm. and that semi-final against um Villarreal um, Villarreal mm. with yeah. the penalties. Yeah. So it's, you just think to yourself, yeah. oh, you know what, looking at it, um, obviously at the time of recording, there's still <clears throat> games left and everything. Um, if Leicester end up going out, I wouldn't mind getting Red Star, who they're playing. Um, I think that that's a favourable draw. Um, some people might not agree with me, but I wouldn't mind Rangers. Mm. <clears throat> and the reason why I say that is because they do concede a lot of goals. They are susceptible at the back. And mm. you only have to look at their game. I think it finished eight or nine, six or whatever the hell it was. It was ridiculous on aggregate. Um, but that would be a tough, tough game. Um, it's going to be all tough from here, but we're in it, mate. We're in it. It is. And let's at least be able to travel somewhere where we don't end up having to play away from the Emirates, you mm. know, for our home leg. Because... This is where I think that UEFA have no consideration in any way, shape or form. Because before these rounds would have started, they have to look at the whole situation and say, right, these teams can't play at their home ground. You know, Spurs were able to play at White Hart Lane or whatever the hell they call their new place. You know, Manchester United are able to play at home and everything else. So they should look and go, look, it's not really... an fair that teams have got to travel and do this. So let's do what we did last season. Let's go and pick one venue, one match, and play all these games out and make it a really exciting, you know, final part of the tournament, as it was last year. You can go back to normality next year, you know, touch wood. But that's where I feel that it's wrong, you know. And even going to the FA, at what point did the FA not look at the situation and say that they're just as part of the problem and Sky and all these other people because we've got a 12 o'clock kickoff on Sunday. Mm. You know, Leicester are playing right now. We've just had to travel 4,000 odd miles away to Greece 
you know, at what and there's no midweek games next week. We've got a full week. So why could not Sky, the Premier League, and everyone go, look, the situation's a little bit different. Arsenal have had to travel. Let's move the game to a Monday night. Let's mm. give them both an extra 24 hours just to recover a bit. Let's have a bit of respect. Do you know what I mean? And then you have six days until the next set of Premier League games on the weekend. Why can people not just have a bit of consideration? Do you know what I mean? So that's my only gripe well, with the competition in that respect. Who cares but, at the moment because they're through woo! Arsenal, through and um, we'll see who we get in the next round. Nice one, DT. Yeah, man. Every week on AFTV Picks, we give away £1,000. And all you've got to do is enter our free-to-play competition and go head-to-head -head with me, win it, and uh, this could be yours. Get involved right now, click the link in the description, and you can play, and it's absolutely free. All you have to do is be over 18 and uh, have some decent football knowledge. So what are you waiting for? Get involved now and you can win yourself £1,000.